Good morning. Welcome again to this another series lecture about Electrical Wiring Simulator or EWS. Today we're going to perform the number 8 activity under the Magnetic Contactors module. Okay, let's click this one. Okay, so the title of the number 8 activity is the uh, interlocking lamps. So in this particular example, we will be doing uh, the interlocking. We have two magnetic contactors and we will be using uh, pilot lamps, two pilot lamps in this particular activity. So let's click the play button and then the normal mode. Okay, so let's inspect first the schematic diagram or the wiring, the electrical diagram for our activity. Okay, so this portion here is very similar to the previous uh, interlocking circuit that we had. However, we only, only added this PL1 here. So this is the source lamp. Okay, this will indicate that there is already uh, an energy or a current in the in our system here. Okay, so okay, so if we press this PB2 here, okay, so this KM1 will activate. So this uh, PL3 here and the PL4 is just an indicator that this KM1 and KM2 is already in energized state. Okay, so if we press this one here, so this is a normally closed contact of the KM2 and then this one will energize. If this one is energized, this KM1 here will be closed and then PL3 will be Turn on. So no matter how you press this uh, PB3 here, since this one will already be open because this one is energized, this one is open, so this PKM2 will not uh, turn on. Okay. However, if you release this one and then press this PB3, the current will be able to flow through this line here, activating or energizing this KM2. If this KM2 is energized, so this one will open. So no matter how you press this PB2, the KM1 will not activate. So if this one is activated by pressing this PB3, okay, so this one is turned on or close, in close circuit and then this PL4 will turn on. So basically, PL3 and PL4 is just an indicator that KM1 and KM2 are energized. Okay, so let's wire the circuit first and then later on we will simulate the functionality of this system. Okay, so we have to connect first the uh, S to the fuse tube. Okay, so S to the fuse 2. Next, we have to connect the uh, output of our fuse 2 to the PL1. Okay, input PL1. Okay, and then the output of our PL1 go back to the uh, input or output of the fuse 1. Undo. Okay, and then from the fuse to the breaker. Next, we have to connect this PB2 here. We have to connect this PB2 here, the input of the PB2 through the, uh, we can connect it to the input of the PL1, but I think it's going to be easier if we connect it to the uh, output of our uh, fuse 2, output of our fuse 2. Okay, so which is this one here, output of the fuse 2 connected to the input of the PB2. Okay, and then the output of the PB2 connected to the 21 of the KM2. The 21 is around here. Okay, connected to the output. And then the output of this uh, 22 will be connected to the A1 of the KM1. Oops. The output of the 22 to the A1 of the KM1. Okay. And then, we can connect the output of the KM1 or the A2 of the KM1. We can connect it to the uh, fuse 1 or we can connect it to the output of the PL1. So I think it would be easier if we connect it to the output of the PL1. Okay. So next is We have to connect the PB3. So the PB3, the easiest way is to connect this one to the input of the PB2. Okay, connect it to the input of the PB2. And then the output of the PB3, the output should be connected to the input of this 
uh, KM1, the 21 of the KM1. Okay, so the output be connected to the 21 of the KM1, which is this one here. Okay, and then the output of the KM2 with KM1, which is the 22, should be connected to the A1 of the KM2. So this one, this wire here. Okay. Oops, undo. Zoom in. So this one should be connected to the A1. Okay. And then the A2 and be connected to the uh, output of the PL2, the fuse one, but I think it would be easier if we connect it directly to the output or the A2 of the KM1. So A2 to A2. Okay. So A2 to A2. So we are done with this one here. So we have to connect this one here, the 13 of the KM1. To the, uh, we have two options here. Actually, we have one, two, three, four. We have four options here. But we can connect this one here, the 13, to the uh, input of the PB2. Let's try to connect this one, the 13, to the input of the PB2. Okay. 13. Thirteen, which is this one here, okay, and then input of the PB two, okay. So thirteen to the input of the PB two, okay. So it would be very confusing that uh, there is a connection here. Maybe we can rewire this one. Undo. Okay, let's try to solve it like a puzzle. Okay, let's try to put it this way and then that way, that way, this way, that way, and then yeah. Okay, so that is D13. And then the 14 or the uh, out of the normally contact will be connected to the X1. Or the input of the PL3. Okay, so that is why it is very important that you connect it wire per wire. Okay, so connected to the PL3. Okay, so PL3. So this one here, so this one is the PL3, the input of the PL3. You have to connect it through here. Okay, so how can we do it? Maybe we can do it this way. Okay, and then that one. Uh, okay. And then we can connect it to the input of the PL3. Okay, next is the output of the PL3. Okay, so the output of the PL3, we can connect it to A2, A2 of the uh, contactors. Okay. So I think it would be easier if we connect it to the A2 of the M2. A2 of the M2. Okay. So next is the, the this one. The 13 of the K2, which is uh, this one here. The 13 of the K2, which is this uh, terminal here. So 13 of the K2, we can connect it directly to the 13 of this one here. Or we can also directly connect it to the input of the PB3. So I think uh, it would be easier if we connect it to the input of the PB3 because there are so many wires here. So we can create a loop around here. Okay, so 13. We can connect it to the input of the PB3. Okay, and then the uh, output, the, which is the 14, we can connect it to the input of the PL4. The 14, which is this one here. We can connect it to the output of, or to the input of the PL4. Okay. And then lastly, we can connect the output of the PL4 
to the output of the uh, PL3 or the A2s. You can also connect that one, but it would be easier if you connect the output of the PL4 to the output of the PL3. Okay. So let's connect this one here to the output of the PL3. Okay, so let's try to zoom out and then verify if uh, our wiring is correct. Okay, zoom out. Zoom out and then let's uh, move it so that we can access the push button when we simulate the circuit here. Okay, let's try to submit. Submit. So pass. So we have the 18 wires connected, uh, connected correctly. Okay. So let's now try to press this PB2 here. If you press this PB2, okay, and then release the PL3 turn on and turn off the PB3 hold the PL4 turn on. Okay. However, if you press the PB2, we can assume that this, uh, this one here is uh, turn on. Okay. And then the PL3 will uh, the pilot lamp 3 will be turned on let's click again okay turn on however if you press this uh, pb uh, push button number three no matter how you press this push button number three the pl4 will not turn on because of the interlocking circuit however if you release this one okay and press this pb3 so you can now turn on or energize the contactor number two and then the pilot lamp number four to turn on Okay, no matter how you press this PB2, okay, the PL3 will not turn on or the uh, contactor number one will not energize because of the contactor circuit. Okay, so in the next lecture, we will be implementing the relays and then next, next lectures, we will be doing the motor control circuits. Okay, so see you in the next lectures.